All right, so good evening. Welcome back to JPC Spiritual Talk. It's Jared Campbell. So day 11, the chosen blended harmony of the Gospels. Before we jump into our evening reads here and reflection, we're going to ask the Lord a quick prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we're going to ask the Lord, shine to hearts, O loving Master, the pure line of your divine knowledge, and open the eyes are mine, that we may understand your teachings in Scripture. Help us to apply what we learn. So after having conquered simple desires, we may pursue a spiritual way of life, thanking and doing all things that are pleasing to you. Your Christ, your God, your light, and to you we get glory, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, both now and forever in the stages. Amen. Oh, how I love your laws, meditation, all the words land to my feet, like to my path. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, they will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory of the Father, and the Son, Holy Spirit, both now and forever in the sages. I mean, for it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by a word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Again, again, my mother and brothers and sisters are those who hear the word of God and do it. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. The Lord is our shepherd. Good evening. Welcome back. So great is his faithfulness. Indeed, the Spirit is willing. The flesh is weak. So day 11, our first reading from the blended harmony of the Gospels. Day 11, we we'll start out reading questions from John the Baptist in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Then John's disciples told him in prison about all the things Christ was doing. So John, so John summoned two of his disciples and sent them out. To the Lord asking, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? When the man reached him, they said, John the Baptist sent us to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? At that time, Jesus healed many people of diseases, afflictions, and evil spirits. And he granted sight to many blind people. He replied to them, Go and report to John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, those with leprosy are cleansed. The deaf hear and the dead are raised, and the poor are told the good news, and blessed is the one who isn't offended by me. As John's disciples were leaving, he began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed swaying in the wind. What then did you go out and see? A man dressed in soft clothes. See those who are splendidly dressed and live in luxury or in royal places. What then did you go out to see? A prophet, yes, I tell you. And more than a prophet, this one about whom it is written. See, I'm sending my messenger ahead of you, and he will prepare your way before you. I tell you, among those born of women, no one greater than John but the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And when all the people, including the tax collectors, heard this, they acknowledged God, God's way of righteousness because they had been baptized with John's baptism. But since the Pharisees and experts in the law had not been baptized by him, they rejected the plan of God for themselves. From the days of John the Baptist until now, Jesus continued, the kingdom of heaven has been suffering violence, and the violent has been seizing it by force. For all the prophets in the law prophesied until John. If you're willing to accept it, he is Elijah, who is to come. Let anyone who has ears listen. To what then should I compare the people of this generation? And what are they like? They are like children sitting in a marketplace and calling to each other. We played the flute for you, but you did not dance. We sang a lament, but you did not weep. For John the Baptist did not come eating bread or drinking wine. You say, he has a demon. The Son of Man has come eating and drinking. And you say, look, a gluten and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by all her deeds. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Beautiful, right? Beautiful read. According to the church fathers, the apostles. John the Baptist is asking this question, right? And really why he's asking this question is to guide his own disciples towards Jesus, right? 
Undoubtedly, John's own faith also strengthened through Christ's responses, right? So could John have his own doubt? Yes. John was human, right? But, you know, that's the thing sometimes, right? We're all human, right? Also, we see that Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled, right? It's fulfilled when Jesus says, and Jesus answered and said to them, Go and tell John the things which you hear and see. The blind see and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them. These was predicted by the prophet Isaiah of the coming of the Messiah. Isaiah 61 verse 1. Jesus tells us that John the Baptist is the greatest prophet, right? So it's Jesus who ascribes that role to John the Baptist, not John ascribing it to himself. We see several interpretations have been given. What to the idea the kingdom of heaven suffers violence? We read that. Some say it refers to Jewish opposition to the gospel. Others have said it refers to the kingdom breaking into the world violently. That is, with great power and force. Still others have said... And the kingdom of heaven refers to what? Christ himself. Who has been incarnate since what the days of John the Baptist. Who will suffer violence. The cross. According to St. John Christensen. The violent who take the kingdom by force. Are those who have such earnest desire for Christ. That they let nothing stand between themselves. And faith. And him. Jesus mentioned a child's game. Right? A reference to a game played to what among Jewish children who who would play who would divide one into two groups, those pertaining to play musical instruments or singing, and those responding in a manner opposite of what would have been expected. Christ draws a parallel, right, to the Jewish leaders who responded wickedly both to John the Baptist as being what aesthetic, verse 18. In Matthew chapter eleven. And to Christ as being what too liberal in mercy and joy. Verse 19, Matthew chapter 11. Woe to unrepentant cities. Then he proceeded to denounce the towns where most of his miracles were done. But they did not repent. Woe to you, Chorson. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the miracles that were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented in sackcloth and ashes long ago. But I tell you, it would be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon on the day of judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, will not be exalted to heaven. No, you will go down to Hades. For if the miracles that were done in you have been done in Sodom, it would have remained until today. But I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom, Sodom, on the day of judgment and for you. Interesting. At the time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and, and revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, because this was your good pleasure, all things have been entrusted to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son desires to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are heavy, weary, and burdened. I'll give you rest. Take my yoke and learn from me, because I am lonely and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls, for my, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Beautiful. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So it's a far greater sin. Listen attentively. It's a far greater sin to have seen Christ's works and what rejected them, just like the Pharisees. Then it is the never to have known him at all. So you're better to not know him at all than it is to have seen his works and wonders and everything that he can do and reject it. Be like the Pharisees. Beware of that leaven. The great, the great blessed Theoplak knows that God has hidden the mysteries from the wise of the world and not out of malice towards his creatures, but because of their own unworthiness. Whoa. It was they who chose to trust their, their own fallen wisdom and judgment rather than God. Furthermore, it is out of love that God 
withholds this revelation from those who would scorn it so that they do not receive an even greater condemnation. Wow. Beautiful. Talk about Jesus' yoke. This is a submission into the kingdom of God. A yoke can be seen as a sign of hardship, burdens, and responsibilities. According to my Orthodox Study Bible, Three Kingdoms, chapter 12, verse 1 through 11. Jeremiah, chapter 34, verse 1 through 11. And the wisdom of Sychre, chapter 40, verse 1. But in Christ, the yoke is what easy. For the power of God works in each person. Furthermore, the reward is infinity, greater than any effort man puts forth. Gentile is literally, gent, gentle means, literally means meek. I apologize. So it's gentle, not Gentile. Sorry. Get ahead of myself. So gentle literally means meek. Right? Beautiful. So anointing of Jesus' feet. Then one of the Pharisees invited him to eat. Then one of the Pharisees invited him to eat with him. He entered the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. And a woman in the town, who was a sinner, found out that Jesus was reclining at the table. In the Pharisee's house, she brought an, al an alabaster jar of perfume and stood behind him at his feet, weeping, and began to wash his feet with her tears. She wiped his feet with her hair, kissing them and anointing them with the, with the perfume. And the Pharisees who had invited him saw this, and he said to himself, This man, if we were a prophet, would know who and what kind of woman this is, who is touching him. She's a sinner. And Jesus replied to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. He said, Yes, say it, teacher. A creditor had two debtors, one owed 500 denaria and the other 50. Since they could not pay it back, he graciously forgave them both. So which of them will love him more? Simon answered, I suppose the one he forgave. I suppose the one he forgave more. You have judged correctly, he told him. Turning to the woman, he said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I, I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet. But she, with her tears, have washed my feet and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but she hasn't stopped kissing my feet since I came in. You didn't anoint my head with olive oil, but she has anointed my feet with perfume. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven. That's why she loved much. But the one who is forgiven little loves little. And then he said to her, your sins are forgiven. Those who were at the table with him began to say among themselves, who is this man who is this man who even forgives sins? And he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Afterward, he was traveling from one town in a village to another, preaching and telling the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him. And also some women who had been healed of evil spirits and sickness. Mary Magdalene's seven demons had come out of her. Joanna, the wife of Shusa, Herod Stewart, Susanna, and many others who were supporting them from their possessions. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Beautiful. Beautiful. So the Pharisees was intrigued. So the Pharisee that invited Christ was intrigued. Well, he's intrigued by Christ. He was. As evidenced by what is invitation, but he clearly does not believe in him. Shown by his re the reaction, what, to Christ's mercy, right? And by his lack of even of any common hospitality. The encounter with the civil woman is an icon of the grace found only in the church. Through her, the church is justified as being greater than the law, for the law does not know the forgiveness of sins, nor the mystery of which secret sins are cleansed. Therefore, what is lacking in the law is perfect in the gospel. St. Ambrose in Milan. Beautiful. Beautiful. Talk about the women that were faithful to Christ to the end. The ones that were mentioned at the end of this reading. And were the first to what receive and what proclaim the good news of the gospel and his resurrection is beautiful. And the scriptures are number seven, right? Seven, because Mary Magdalene has seven demons. Often symbolizes completeness, fullness, right? Indicating that Mary Magdalene had been completely given over what? To the darkness before her healing, meaning only God could heal her. 
because she has seven demons. And only God could complete her healing to make her full again, right? To make her whole. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Our last reading, we're going to talk about the spiritual family of Jesus, and we'll close out. We've talked about this before. Spiritual family of Jesus, named the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. While he was still speaking with the crowds, his mother and brothers were standing outside wanting to speak to him. But they could not meet with him because of the crowd. Someone told him, look, your mother, your brothers are standing outside wanting to speak to you. He replied to the one who was speaking to him, who is my mother? And who are my brothers? Looking at those sitting circle around him, he stretched out his hand toward disciples and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever hears and does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Name the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Beautiful. We say that in our prayer, in our opening prayer. So Christ's relatives have not understood what his identity or his mission it's fair enough. He points instead what to a, a spiritual family based on what obedience to what? The will of his father. In Jewish use, the way the Jewish people use the term brother, so listen attentively, can indicate any number of relations, right? Abraham called his nephew Lot brother. Genesis chapter 14, verse 14. Boaz spoke of his cousin Emelet as his brother. Ruth chapter 4. Three, and Joab called his cousin Amusa brother. Second Kingdom chapter twenty verse nine. And I'm Orthodox study Bible. Christ himself had no blood brothers, for Mary had but one son, Jesus. The brothers mentioned here were either stepbrothers, sons of Joseph by a previous marriage, or cousins. Indeed, Jesus commits his mother what to the care of John on the cross. That's in John chapter nineteen verses twenty five through twenty seven. Which had been unthinkable if Mary had other children. So if Mary did have other children, then why was she once again given over to the care of John right at the cross? So, you know, that's my little reflection on that, right? With Christ's spiritual family. Christ's spiritual family are the people who do what the will of his father, right? That's what he's saying. My mother, brothers, and sisters are those who hear or those who hear the word of God and do it. It's beautiful, right? Beautiful. And we're going to close out, right, with that reflection. Right, it's beautiful. Keep looking towards heaven. Right? Always keep looking towards heaven. Biggest takeaway from the reading tonight is that you find rest in Jesus' yoke. So turn to Christ. The biggest takeaway is that. You want to find rest, right? If you're burned out and you don't know where to turn to, then turn to Christ where the yoke is easy. And it's true, Right? There you will find rest. I find rest all the time in Christ. It's my advice. Turn to him. Turn to his yoke because it's easy. Right? Let him handle your stress. Right? Let him handle your day. Right? Give it to him. Right? Let him be your time manager and all that. Right? That's what I always say. He will guide you. He will lead you. But never. He will never forsake us. Never. Even we have the faith is as tiny as a mustard seed. It's tiny. It's a mustard seed, right? What did I say this morning, right? I think it was this morning readings. I said it or could have been some readings before. I had mentioned it doesn't matter how big your effort is, right? It could be as small as a mustard seed effort with God. Or it could be a gigantic, enormous effort. Whatever your effort is, right? He will always provide. And he will always be there for you. You just have to have that faith. Like I said, it can be as little, right, as that mustard seed. But you just got to have that faith. You got to hold on, right? That's, that's the biggest takeaway. And you, you, you'll get that if you turn to Christ, to his yoke, right? And you keep that little bit of faith and right? just hang on. That's all I got. In the, name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord God, you spoke to us your divine saving words. You illuminate soul sinners, comprehend what we just read. We don't appear simply to hear spiritual words, but doers of good deeds, true pursuers of faith, having to blame his life and conduct without reproach in Christ our Lord. And you are light to you, we get glory. Father and Son, Holy Spirit, both now and forever, and let's say just.
Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. They will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. Forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory of the Father, and the Son, Holy Spirit, both now and forever, in this ages. Amen. We, we depart in peace. In the name of the Lord, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Peace be with you all. Go in peace. Shalom, shalom. May the Lord forgive those who love us and those who hate us. Keep seeking him. Thank you all again for following. All right, it means a lot. I encourage people to leave comments, right? YouTube or Rumble, right? I want to get to know a lot of you, right? And I like to learn. So if some of you have some knowledge out there, you know, it'd be cool to, uh, you know, share it with me, right? May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be merciful to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, both now and forever, endless ages. Amen. Jared Wesley Campbell. Good evening, good day, good night, good afternoon, good morning, good day, whatever and however these messages, reflections, studies find you. Peace be with you all. I love you all. JPCE, spiritual talk, never hold back, right? No excuses. Lay your treasures in heaven, seek him. Right? Give him your heart, he does the rest. Takes a, a small little mustard seed type effort with God, that size faith. Right? Give him your heart, he does the rest. Just gotta hang in there. I love you all. I'm out.